Hi everyone, welcome to Karaoke Moment, whereby today we have a video and we'll be discussing about do not be trapped in your past. Instead, focus on the new you. This is very important for us to be able to have this discussion because you can be buried in your past, even not enjoy the new you, you know, the changes in you. And uh, I want to welcome you to this channel whereby we discuss life conversations. And in these life conversations, we believe that life is a journey, you walk in it. Whereby life, as you know, it throws us a lot. It gives us experiences. And that is why we are saying today, one of the experiences we have should be in the past. Do not be buried in your past. Focus on the new you into your future and the in first point that we are going to be discussing about is let's be sure and remain honest with ourselves there's nothing much you can change so the past remains the past there's nothing you can change whatever that has happened in your life whether you are in control of or not it's in the past there's nothing you can do about it all the life experiences that you have, the family that you were uh, born in, whatever circumstances that you went through, whatever environment that you went through, there's nothing you can do about it. I remember <laughs> long time. It's a story that I like to remember about uh, the former president of the US, a long time one, yeah? I don't know what number he was, but uh, Bill Clinton. I was younger and we were looking at him we were able to see him having a wife, Hillary, and their daughter, I think Chelsea, if I'm not wrong. And they owned a dog and a jet. <laughs> Around that time, because I was uh, it in my younger days, I remember when I looked at that, I would admire their life. They would be uh, getting onto their jets and uh, they would be walking around with their dog. And I thought, my goodness, if life then there's a way that it has given someone a choice, I would have liked to be the second uh, daughter or child in that family so that at least I can enjoy all the wealth. But you know what? Not possible. I still enjoy uh, my background and where I came from. But what I'm saying is you cannot change your past. You cannot change your family where you came from. You cannot change uh, the hardships you went through. You cannot change your past. It can only remain your past. So embrace your past as you focus on to making a better you of today and of tomorrow. Because your life is not basically to be grounded or to be determined by your past. You can be able to change your present and your future. Do not be daunted. Do not be put down by the experiences. You know, like if you did not put on shoes for some of us, do not think this is what is going to happen throughout your life. Desire one day to own a pair of shoes. Maybe you did not own a very good house as a family and now you're an adult. Do not be say, saying especially what is negative. Aim to what is positive. If you didn't have a very good house as a family, because that is the best your father and your mother could have afforded, what you can do is you can't change that, but you can tell yourself, that you're going to make your life better, work more diligently, because some of our parents, by the way, they worked very hard. It's not about working hard, but also with smartness and opportunities. Our parents, maybe that is the best opportunity they had, and we thank God for how they brought us for some of us. I know some people, they can't even understand, but hey, is there anyone understanding me how sometimes our parents didn't have enough and you could see their hearts, they really wanted to try for us. But maybe the opportunities and where they were coming from, that's how it was. We cannot change that past. But as I was saying, we can be able to change and say, now, my family, we didn't have a good house, but you tell yourself you're going to have a better house for your family, for yourself, for your family, and a better life. If you didn't have food, you're, you're saying, I am going to work hard, work smartly, diligently, and try to change that narrative. And that is why I thank God for people who, when God lifts them up from uh, the neediness, 
and the poverty lines, they are able to go back and build their parents, maybe a better house, maybe buy them better clothes. I really appreciate. Hey, and here at Karaoke, because we have live conversations, I want to pause this video here and say, if you know that your parents didn't have much, and uh, you have, and you have already built them a house, made their life better, uh, keep on checking on them and try to alleviate the neediness in them, I want to congratulate you for that because I, that's a noble thing to do. So yes, back to our point. <laughs> you cannot change your past. Let your past remain the past, but instead embrace and celebrate the new you. Learn to do the right things and better things. Forget about the past. Even maybe you could be the same one who has been in the past. Maybe you have not been uh, able to get better opportunities in the past. And one day, maybe you will realize it's not that you didn't have the opportunities. You had the opportunities, but maybe wasted them. You can always arise the occasion and say you're going to start afresh. So the past, let it remain in the past. Let it remain in the bygones. Let it remain buried. But Celebrate the new you and focus and tell yourself you're going to have a better new in you. You're going to have a bright future and a bright in you. Number two, living in the past is like living in prison. And a prison is a place where there could be shelter because shelter is a basic need. But one of the things that I value most is freedom and prisons takes away your freedom when you live in the past you will not have freed your mind you'll always be thinking and sulking and complaining and looking negative into life in a negative way wishy-washy you know the way you say oh i wish i was i wish i was born like i said in a more richer family in a well-educated family in a wealthy family so that I can maybe inherit more. But how about you also leave an inheritance for yourself and your children, children? Because actually even in the Bible, it encourages that um, we should leave inheritances for our children, children, that's our great grandchildren, our uh, grandchildren. So what I'm saying is other than sulking and other than complaining, living in the past, it makes someone lose freedom. It is like living in the prison. I remember I used to visit a prison back in Kenya and a few others. And every time I would visit the prison, because we would go there, you know, for mostly for church ministry, just to go and encourage them and have some um, mission in preaching, you know. So we would go and take some church services, maybe, or donations for foodstuffs and uh, such things, toiletries to the prisoners. And when you go there, some of their sharing, other than everything else, one of the areas that I realized was one of the areas that was, you can't do much, was the area of lack of freedom. You would even go when a new road is being constructed or there's a new building and they would narrate to you as if they are not even living in Kenya. They would be asking you, oh, I hear there's a super highway being constructed. You know, I've been in this building for 25 years, my goodness. And I started realizing how hard it is. Freedom is important. That even you narrate to them how it is being built, they've never stepped out because they are in prison, incarcerated there. Can you imagine now when you live in your past, it's like that person in prison. You do not know what is happening in the world, even if you know you can't picture it. So when you live in your past, you can't picture your future. You can't be able to maximize your future. You can't be able to celebrate yourself and see the hope in it. So please do not live in the past. It is like living in a prison. Number three, face facts and not fantasy. It is important for you to face the facts of life. Tell yourself, yes, I have dealt with myself and I've realized I am the problem. Tell yourself you've realized uh, maybe you have been drinking, becoming an alcoholic too much. Maybe you've been um, not been a good listener, not concentrating to uh, financial disciplines and guidelines given to you. No wonder you're broke. Maybe as a student, you're not listening to your teachers and parents. No wonder you're failing your exams. So what you do is face that fact. 
there's a problem, there's a challenge. And what you do is endeavor to come out of it. Have a fact-based kind of a changeover. Tell yourself, now that I've known that I've been drinking too much, know the reason and change your attitude. Come out of it. Maybe join a group that can encourage you. Join a group that can be able to walk with you and show you the ways out. Get into groups that can be able to encourage you or work out or maybe get into a gym. Know what is uh, stressing you to make you become an alcoholic. Some people I know, they say, oh, my father used to drink, was an alcoholic, so that's why I'm, I'm an alcoholic. No, we are saying you can be able to break the negatives. Why not say now that my dad was a, the best businessman, I can also be a best businessman. We can copy the positives. But anything that is negative in our life, we can say, no, I'm ending this negative cycle in our family and I'm going to start afresh. So that you can be able to start afresh and become new and face the new you. And even the generations to come will be able to be different. You can also ask yourself, why am I not, because you're facing facts, why am I not passing my maths, for example, as a student? Maybe just the way of calculating that is different. You're not able to calculate well your maths. Maybe you don't have very good formula um, uh, ways of getting the formulas of the maths. Get another student who could be doing better. Get extra tuition with your tutor or with your lecturer or with your teacher and you'll be able to be better. What you're saying in this point is face facts, not fantasies. Face the facts and work out from the facts. You'll be able to be a better person. Maybe as a man or a woman, you're wondering you never succeed in your love affairs. Maybe every time you start a relationship, you fail. And you ask yourself, why am I always failing? as a boyfriend or as a girlfriend, there's no relationship that materializes or becomes better. And you realize, if you look at it analytically, because it's fact you are looking, the first girlfriend left you because you lied. The second one, you lied, you cheated on her. The third one, you did this. Then you tell yourself, for sure, this is what I've done. I need to improve and become better. I need to be more truthful. As a lady also, you can find yourself and ask yourself, why are all my relationships not materializing? And you realize, oh, it's because uh, I am rude. I'm not polite. Then you check on your second relationship. You're also not polite. These are characteristics that is following you then. Because this point you are facing fact and not fa uh, fantasy, try to work out on that. Try to look for politeness. Try to have a friend who can be an accountability, maybe partner, and tell you when you're going off. Try to face truth so that you can be able to know what you're working on. It is very important. If, for example, you're a businessman and every business you're starting, you fail. Get financial uh, business plan people who can help you on how to plan your business, maybe on uh, finances on how to keep your book of accounts, and you realize you'll improve because you're challenging yourself to face facts so that you don't live in the past and you're able to live in the present. And at this point, I want to ask you, have you liked this video? If you haven't, kindly like, subscribe, and comment on our videos and many other videos that you'll find in Carol Kyoi Moments channel that you can continue following and watching them. We'll appreciate you for that. So number, another thing, because also we are talking about how to check on the facts. If, for example, you are a wife or a husband and you find yourself there is always a complaint about a certain thing. Maybe you are uh, late for your appointments or there's an area that uh, your spouse has picked up on. It's always good to stop and try to check on yourself so that you can be able to get help. Because sometimes if you don't stop and check on yourself, you are not going to improve on it because you are taking a stock on yourself and checking on the facts and how you can improve on yourself. Uh, number four, decide to change and change for the good. So if you've decided now, I've realized it's true, I have a problem. I am the one who is uh, who goes to work late. That is why my boss is pulling me out. I am the one who is rude. That is why uh, my friends are running away from me. 
I am the student who does not do my homework no wonder I'm failing my maths. I'm the businessman who is not keeping my books of accounts no wonder I get broke. Now change for the good. Do it as expected because you're saying you need to face your now and your future. So start practicing politeness. Start working on your books. Start saving money as a businessman. As a, as a friend, as a spouse, as a sibling, maybe in a family and people are saying you're rude, work on your politeness. Change on it. You can have even an accountability uh, partner or friend or person who can be able to be helping you on to check whether you're improving, to see whether you're keeping your good vibe because your plan is to keep on to the good and not on to the bad. You are running away from your past that could be making you struggle with your present and which your present, if you struggle with it, might affect your future. All right. Another point that we are going to face is which is the last one is be persistent. Point number five, be persistent. It might not be easy. You will not just wake up and changes happen and you say, oh, I'll never think about how uh, maybe um, my dad abandoned my family and he struggled with my mom or my wife left me or my children, one of them is a drunkard, or I failed as a businessman, or as a student, I failed in my exams. You might not even as well be easy to forgive yourself at that point. But you know what? It might take a while, but be persistent. Keep on moving. Keep on challenging yourself. yourself. Keep on telling yourself, I can make it. Keep on moving forward. Don't let your past bury your now and bury your future. I want to request you to like our video as we come to the end, comment and keep on sharing because we come to the end of this video and I want to see you in the next video. God bless you all the time from Karokyoi Moments.